Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is apparently not a fan of tough questions. He, he loves the admiration, he loves the cheering fans. But if there are any constituents who are concerned about his proposed policies or the direction he is headed in regard to the coronavirus pandemic, he will arrest them. I'm not even kidding, that is literally what happened recently during a press conference for Ron DeSantis. Now, this all took place as activists had shown up to the press conference to ask DeSantis about a whole litany of issues, including his policies on critical race theory and his recent rhetoric on anti-COVID testing. And here is one of the activists. Uh, ben Frazier, to be exact, who uh, wanted to hold DeSantis, his governor, accountable. Please go ahead with your news guys. But we can't do that until we've asked you to leave. And so we why, need why to leave. Why, why do we have to leave? To public what, building? Because we're having a private press conference. A private press conference, press conference, press conference, press conference, conference with having, a public official. We don't allow oh, the members of the public to come Excuse to the press me, conference. Excuse me, Let me just get this straight. Yeah. You're having a private news conference with a public official on public property. We don't allow members property. of the public to come to our press conferences. This is for members of the media with the elected officials. They have the conversation. If we want to have a separate conversation that you guys want to have. Well, here's, here's my question to you. Here's my question. What about the press conferences what about? at schools where he's had the whole school there? And other places but where those, we, people for security for reasons, him. we know who those people are. So we there's a question, I just there's a question regarding security. There is Would a you like my ID? Security. So if we can move everyone out of the press conference. I think Ben Frazier makes a lot of great points in that brief video, especially in regard to a public space, a press conference regarding public officials and the decisions that they make, which of course impact the lives of constituents of Florida. And the fact that certain people get, I don't know, canceled, maybe that's a good word. The type of people whose <laughs> free speech gets trampled on just because that speech is not favored or preferred by Republican lawmakers in the state of Florida. I think it's all really fascinating stuff, especially since, you know, They've really presented themselves, John, as people who are against cancel culture, people who are in favor of free speech, who really value the ability for Americans to speak out and to hold people in positions of power accountable, to hold the elite accountable. It's curious that the governor's office made the decision to first try to kick out these activists and then later, as I'll show you, arrest them for refusing to leave. Yeah, clearly censorship. What we just saw in that video was that man was shadow banned by that aide, and yet you know the people who make a career out of talking about this stuff aren't gonna aren't gonna care at all about that. I like that they're trying to put pressure on DeSantis, knowing, and I'm sure they know that they're not gonna get him to change you know what he's doing. He's not doing it because. It makes sense. He's doing all of his actions are chosen because he believes it's going to raise his profile. He is not thinking at all about Florida, about being governor. All of this is, hey, maybe Trump doesn't run in 2024, and then I guess it's going to be me. That's that's all it's about. And he has been terrible when it comes to topics like the the pandemic, the response to the pandemic, and by that I mean the public health response, but basically everything having to do with it from the beginning. And he's only gotten worse over time. He's done. He's not going to do literally anything. He doesn't care how many cases there are. Florida is being devoured by COVID right now. Um, I'm impressed that he was having a press conference. And I believe I saw some. he had some sort of weird thing that happened at that press conference. The news is still breaking on that. Um, at least he's appearing, that's novel. I like it when our elected officials um, do like a little wink and a nod to the fact that we're supposedly a democracy. But, but he can do basically whatever he wants, um, despite the fact, I'm gonna remind you really fast. He became governor back in 2018 at running against Andrew Gillum. And I looked it up because I remember it being a close race. More than 8 million votes were cast, 8.1 million votes were cast. He won by 30,000 votes. Wow. It was the closest gubernatorial election. And that was in 2018, long before we thought that something like a pandemic could happen. And think about how consequential that difference was, that 30,000 votes, not just that you know he doesn't he's going to resign florida to slowly slink sink into the ocean and 
He doesn't care at all about democracy, allowing people to vote and all of that. But the, everything having to do with the pandemic, how different the response could have been if an election had gone slightly differently back in 2018. Yeah, I actually, uh, I remember the election being a close one, but I, I didn't realize that it was only 30,000 votes. And you're right about that. I mean. Um, Clearly, there would be a different response to many different things, including the pandemic, if we had someone else in office in, in Florida. But you know, it, it is also fascinating because, look, Ron DeSantis has really leaned in on these Trump-like talking points and the manufactured culture wars, especially as it pertains to this drummed up nonsense about critical race theory in elementary schools and things like that. But he also, in the middle of another COVID surge, has advocated to limit COVID testing. And we'll get to that in a second, but that's the thing that really boggles my mind, okay? Um, and it was among the many things that these activists wanted to ask him questions about. But he doesn't want questions. He doesn't want to be challenged. He wants these press conferences to be uh, publicity stunts, meant to just mm -hmm. help him uh, politically, uh, help him get his, you know, message out to individuals who are likely to support him if he does choose to run as president in 2024. But I do want to get to what happened later because as I mentioned, Ben Frazier, he's by the way also a disabled activist and the president of the North Side Coalition of Jacksonville. He you know, was actually being pretty polite, like he wasn't being rowdy. He was just saying, he was making great points there. I'm you know, obviously a constituent here, we're in a public space. This is a public official and they kind of refused to give him any real answers for why he and other activists were getting kicked out. And then later, he gets arrested. And we have that video as well. Let's take a look. Why am I being handcuffed? I have not done anything to anyone. Why am I being handcuffed? Why am I being handcuffed? Why am I being handcuffed, Sergeant Gerald? I asked a question, why am I being handcuffed? Am I being arrested? You. Am I being arrested? I'm asking a question. John, could you, for the audience, just juxtapose what we just saw with this activist, Ben Frazier, to what we experienced nearly a year ago? It'll be a one year anniversary mm. tomorrow in the nation's capital. Because if I recall correctly, there's a lot of outrage over the treatment of the pro-Trump insurrectionists who got arrested as they were storming the Capitol and causing all sorts of damage. But I feel like that situation was a little different from what we experienced here with Ben Frazier, just a little bit, there right? There were, um, I, the, the activist that you just showed that video of obviously was far more insidious because he didn't have um, like, what, what you should do is when you're going to attempt to, I don't know, what was he gonna do? He's gonna rough up Ron DeSantis or something. You should at least wear horns or poop on the floor. That way people know who you are. He was much more like a like a spy or a ninja because mm. it was much more subtle. Obviously, he was there to do something incredibly illegal and dangerous. I mean, that goes without saying, except I'm gonna say it anyway. Um, no, the whole thing is ridiculous. Uh, he kept repeating over and over, why am I being handcuffed? Um, and they eventually said he's being detained. I don't even know what that means. I assume he was arrested. In any event, um, he's being handcuffed and detained because they don't think there will be any public, uh, like, public image or political price to pay for it. And in fact, for most right wingers, if they see an activist being uh, led away in handcuffs from a DeSantis event, that's like a net positive for him. Mm -hmm. The fact that he's a black activist, even more so. Like, this is the sort of disgusting calculus that they're doing that we need to be aware of. This doesn't hurt him to do that. If there were a thousand protesters and he'd had the cops come in and tear gas, that would look good for him too. His base is fundamentally anti-democratic. They want to see people's rights being violated in this way. Right, while simultaneously pretending as if they don't want people's rights to be violated. Pretending as though they're against cancel culture, they, they, they want to protect the First Amendment. I mean, when push comes to shove, as long as it has to do with their political opponents, they have no problem 
Mm -hmm. No problems at all with those rights being eroded. And look, you're right, if only they had defecated on the floor, then they would have come across as pleasant tourists rather than <laughs> anything insidious. Now. I wanna also give you some statements from both Ben Frazier and the activist. Ben Frazier said this, and I think he's absolutely right. The governor is afraid to meet with the people. When it comes to public welfare, this governor does not care. He does not want to meet with this public, he wants to run away. And I also wanna be clear about one other thing. I don't agree with any politician, regardless of their political ideology, regardless of their political affiliation, doing what Ron DeSantis did to these demonstrators, to these constituents of Florida who wanted to ask him questions about his own policy. If you are a politician, an elected official, especially if you are in a leadership role like I, like governor of Florida, you should feel proud of your policies, no? You should feel yeah. ready and willing to answer any questions, to defend and stand up in favor of the policies that you've championed. Why is it that Ron DeSantis is so afraid of that? Another demonstrator said this, I wanna talk to the governor about his policies regarding the pandemic, regarding critical race theory, regarding House Bill 1. One of the protesters responded referencing an anti-riot law pushed by DeSantis and you know, calling it an anti-riot law is um, essentially doing DeSantis's dirty work for him. Essentially, mm -hmm. these are uh, policies, these are laws that punish peaceful demonstrators. And the way that they get it passed is by essentially marketing it as an anti-riot law. In reality, these are the kinds of policies that we've seen both proposed and passed across the country that would provide immunity for drivers who run over protesters and things like that. So I think yeah. those are legitimate questions to have. But of course, Ron DeSantis probably doesn't feel so proud about those policies since he's unwilling to answer any questions about them. Yeah, and doesn't feel that he has to. Exactly. That, that is really the issue. It, it ties into every single thing that we talk about. The incentives are not there for accountability, for feeling that, again, if, if your base isn't interested in you being representative or kind or decent or rational or sane, if they don't demand those things, then you don't even need to pretend at public events like this. And so he is not pretending. You know, the other part of the First Amendment that's super valuable to a democracy is freedom of press. And I also found it fascinating that the woman that you saw in the video who was telling the demonstrators to leave wanted to control what the media was doing as everything was unfolding after the group said that they would not leave. A woman who said that she was with the governor's office told them that they were being inappropriate, they weren't being appropriate, and asked the media, asked the journalists to stop recording the group and instead prepare for the news conference. Oh, nice, government officials telling the press what they can and can't mm. do. Please don't do any reporting here. Uh, please serve as uh, specific PR agents for the governor. And yeah. uh, finally, I, I have to get to this one last part because I do think it's super relevant. Ron DeSantis is apparently frustrated at the fact that people are getting tested for coronavirus. It's very Trumpian, let's hear his argument. That's where we're really we want uh, the testing to go. I mean, as, as, as Joe said, and you do have people when, when the kind of the, the hysteria gets going, you know, you'll have certain people that will go out and will just get tested all the time at some of these sites. And that's not a good use of resources. And so he's gonna put out guidance that, that talks about some of the examples where it makes sense, where it doesn't. You know what, I agree, that's that's excellent line of thinking. Um, you know, if I feel a lump in my breast, uh, I'm not gonna go check it out because what if I what if I find new information that I'm not happy about? What if I panic mm -hmm. about it? I just want to avoid panic, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, no testing yeah. and what kind of stupid thought process was that? Well, I mean, it's kind of a demonstration of the the fundamental premise of don't look up, <laughs> yep. so don't get tested. And that's what it is. Look, their strategy from almost the very beginning has been uh, herd immunity. That's one thing they call it. They call it many things. The idea is uh, don't stop people from getting sick. Just let everyone get sick, and really hope that 
you know, aside from the obvious cost of that, which is insane loss of life, millions of people with long COVID, hospitals overwhelmed, people needlessly dying. Okay, they don't care about that, so they set that aside. Uh, hopefully, the immunity that you get from your previous infection is permanent, because then at least herd immunity lets us get past it. Of course, we're finding out that that's not actually true, that that right. immunity does wane. So it's not only in the moment an insane strategy, fundamentally immoral, it also isn't going to work. The issue with pursuing that strategy, of course, aside from the needless loss of life, the you know catastrophic historic human suffering, is that if you just let everyone get sick, and you're testing, it's gonna look terrible for you. And so like with Donald Trump, this is just the same thing as what we experienced in the fall of 2020. Uh, take actions and uh, give statements that encourage people to get sick and then do what you can to stop the testing from detecting the obvious uh, inevitable consequences of what you're pushing for. And so we have that nationally with Trump. And now we have that with Ron DeSantis in his own words right there coming up with a straw man of a person who needlessly goes out and gets tested a thousand times. Does that seem sane to you? Does that seem representative? Obviously not, but for a conservative will make them feel better. And he chose his uh, um, uh, Surgeon General specifically because like with Scott Atlas, he supports as many people getting sick immediately as possible and covering it up by dismantling the testing infrastructure. Yeah. Uh. It's it's incredibly frustrating, especially when you consider how their own disinformation on so many different fronts, whether it has to do with testing or just simply getting the vaccine has needlessly led to more people dying, has led to, I mean, they talk about the economy, like they care about the economy so much. You care about the economy, encourage people to get vaccinated. That way people aren't so afraid to go to work, right? We see hospitals that are already overwhelmed again, thanks to this new variant, but they're not overwhelmed with vaccinated patients. They're overwhelmed with unvaccinated patients. And who did that? Why are they unvaccinated? It's just, it's, and we have a shortage of monoclonal antibodies, something that Ron DeSantis and Texas Governor Greg Abbott are complaining about nonstop. You know, the need for monoclonal antibodies would be diminished considerably if you just convince people to get vaccinated. But they can't do exactly. it because it's their, you know, it's a little political culture war. Yeah, and they've been encouraged that that is the solution. Just get sick and take it. Oh, oops, now we need to buy way more. And that's like the most expensive way you can deal with this. Exactly. But again, they're the ones that are fighting back against big pharma and all that. It's just that the inevitable outcome of their strategy is giving maximal amounts of money to those corporations. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.